martial law. As martial law wore on, more trendy words emerged. You were subversivo or subversive if you criticized government. Those who joined protests or the so-called lightning rallies were called activists or tibak. The tibak and all those keenly aware of state-sponsored torture and abuse were considered mulat, the Filipino word for awake but used to mean enlightened. Rally veterans almost by instinct knew just when to kapit bisig or link arms. This braced them against the water cannons or truncheons as the police inevitably broke up every protest march. Every certified tibak had one precious telephone number written on the back of his hand, the inside of his rubber shoes, or the hem of his shirt. This was the landline and the lifeline to TFD, or the Task Force Detainees of the Philippines, the human rights group that documented and helped political prisoners. Militants on the military's watch list were considered mainit or too hot to handle. They hid in a safe house, sometimes moving from one to the other to evade arrest. Some went yuji or underground. Many took to the hills or namundok to join the armed movement. Those who stayed above ground continued to agit, short for agitate, for change. But they had to be careful or they could end up in a bartulina or the hot box, usually at the dreaded police camp in Bikutan where stories of rape and torture were aplenty. By the time Marcos lifted martial law in 1981, words like ibagsak or topple and revolution were coming to fore. The Philippines was a virtual social volcano ready to explode with a hint of a spark. It came as a single bullet fired on the tarmac of the Manila International Airport on a hot day two years later, and the term people power was born. Tres Martelino Reyes, CNN, Philippines.